Hey, what's up everybody? I just wanted to do a quick follow-up video on the last one I made about adding a tail to your iClone character. So in that video we modeled a tail out of a cylinder in Blender, uh, rigged it, brought it into iClone, attached it to the character, and animated it. So as you can see, if you click on the tail, um, you can click on the edit animation layer just like you would do with a character. But instead of the cool little character, you just get a list of all the bones. And you can say, click on one of the bones and uh, use your rotation tool. And you can bend it around and you can, you know, keyframe those and everything just like a normal character so that you can animate it. So that's all fine and dandy. The problem is, um, if you use this method on something more complex or... Um, you know, in some cases you may want to use inverse kinematics. So I looked into how to do that. At first I thought you were supposed to do it through Blender, but that uh, doesn't really carry through to iClone. So even if you add inverse kinematics in Blender, it doesn't actually like bring it in. Um, the good news is iClone does it by default. The bad news is it doesn't work for the thing as we have it modeled, but I'll sh I'm going to show you a workaround. So number one, I'll, I'll show you kind of the problem here. So the way you're supposed to do inverse kinematics, you know, with a prop in iClone, um, you're supposed to click on this bone edit mode, right, which shows you these different, different um, bones, right? So you can click on different bones. So the idea is for inverse kinematics work, you have to select an anchor point. So basically the first bone that isn't going to move at all. So let's say we wanted to anchor this one. We hold down control and click on it and notice it turns blue. So now we can click on another bone. Uh, we'll say this guy, right? The end one. And if we hit W to get our move tool, we're supposed to be able to move this around and it's supposed to flex through all these joints. But the problem is, you can see it's not really wanting to work. It's kind of bending only at this joint, right? And it's not too forgiving, it's bouncing around and it's only bending at one joint. Um, I racked my brain this morning on trying to figure out how to fix that. Um, I was trying to figure out why, you know, what the cause of that was. Because I've had other, I've tried it out with other props and it works fine. So I'm trying to figure out what the difference of mine is. And in the end, I don't really know right now. But I'll show you a quick way to fix it. So let me get out of the bone end mode. So anyway, um, so I'll show you how to fix it. And it's real, it's actually really pretty easy. So if you've already modeled this up and use and you have this working, um, fear not. We don't even have to go black, back in Blender to do it. Um, first off, if you already have a material defined and you want to keep this, um, click on it, go to the Material tab, and up at the Material list, just going to do save material and you can save it somewhere and then later you can select it and you can go to load material and load that back and that way you don't have to like refigure out your whole shader business okay um, so actually I'm going to do that with this just for the hell of it save it to my desktop and call it uh, crap mat crap mat for crappy material okay Excellent, because um, the one thing, this is going to go bye-bye, so we're just going to delete this guy, right? Fine. I didn't want to do that. Before you delete it, <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. Um, take the thing, select it, right? You're going to export it. So export as an FBX, okay? Um, just the current frame, you don't want to export animations or anything. So here's the thing, the target tool preset. You have all these things, just pick Blender. 
doesn't matter whether you embed textures or not because it doesn't really carry through or work anyway when we bring it back in. Okay. Um, desktop, just name it thing. Crappy tail too. Okay. So that's it. Export it out as an FBX. Use the Blender preset. Now we can delete it. And now we just load it right back in. So now we go back to import, import. And we import crappy tail too. Boink. So it looks the same and it's right back in the same spot. And it looks like actually our material is still there, which is really cool. It's a simpler material. It's been folded down into just a base and a map, so it's not the substance um, material that we had before. So if you still want the exact material, you can go to load material, load crap mat, and we get our whole thing back. So that's fine. Um, so now, the cool thing is though, we open up our, our panel again, click on our bones, we can do the hold down control and select our anchor point, then click on, and without holding down control, click on whatever bone we actually want to move, click, push W to get our tool, and now, check it out. We actually have inverse kinematics going on. So it's really that simple. It's just a matter of saving it out as an FBX with the Blender um, template and then loading it right back in. And then somehow, magically, it works. The only thing I see different is it has these two non-existent bones that it puts in the root. I tried adding those in Blender, just seeing. I, I don't know exactly what it changes. I'm sure there's some magical option that uh, you know doesn't have that we didn't we don't know about but hey it's a good workaround and it works so the cool thing is I can you can click control again to deselect an anchor point and you can select different anchor points so if I want this one anchored now click on this guy and I can move it and now notice everything from your anchor point will move, right? But everything before that will not. Joop, joop, joop. So using this method, you can like do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, if you have multiple anchor points set, I think it just takes the la the latest, the you know, the earliest one. So you have to click on Control, hold down Control, and click on whichever one you want, or like. If you hold down control, it selects it or deselects it. So you really should only have one at a time. So I have to deselect that one and then it'll let me bend all these guys. So that is pretty stinking cool, isn't it? Yep, so anyway. That is how you add inverse kinematics to your tail that we've made in Blender already. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully this uh, helps you out, and I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.